What's your lemonade stand story? He was like, YouTube's gonna be the next big thing, Dev. I'm like, you need to get on that, and you get on it early. And I'm like, uh. And all of us, no, we, we all go through our own trials, our own, our own level of stuff. Sure hope this works out. Otherwise, this will be a huge waste of time. <laughs> I mean, what else is it all about other than just taking risks and continuing to try and grow and hopefully yeah. make get better and better at making things? Most of the billion dollar brands you've seen were started by people that were just solving a problem for themselves. We're telling Lemonade Stand stories from some of the world's top creators, makers, and go-getters. We're rolling, we're rolling right now. We're rolling right now. Hey, just, oh, oh, oh. We're having fun, we're having fun. We're rolling. Yeah. Hey guys, this podcast today is sponsored by Yala, a task management and team collaboration software that we use at Lemonade Stand. We use Yala to keep all of our team members organized, wherever they are. In fact, we used it to plan and organize this podcast. Visit yala.team, that's Y-A-L-L-A dot team, and try it for free. We also have a special offer for all listeners of this podcast. Use promo code LEMONADE and get a lifetime 25% off if you upgrade. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Sharon Provocator with the Lemonade Stand Stories podcast, and I'm here with Mr. Hank Smith, who apparently needs no introduction, because when I asked him, how do I introduce you? You're like, uh, he's like, I don't know. I have no idea. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he, he's a father. He's a husband, uh, a father to five children, lives in Mapleton, Utah, I believe, yep. and is also a professor at BYU. But he's also a, a, an incredible motivational speaker all before COVID uh, shut that world down a little bit. Right written many, many books, um, has become very, very popular in, in the world of, um, I guess, the world of like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you know, yeah. in, that, in that space, he's done a lot of wonderful things and motivated people. And like, I've read a little bit more about you and of how you infuse humor into a lot of the things that you do, which is, that is my jam, man. Like, I, I feel like oh, humor is the way to uh, penetrate people's souls. And so I, I love that. And so I, and I know it's been, a crazy couple of months for you yeah. and i know we've been like kind of ta uh you know like ping ponging a little bit back and forth trying to figure out the right time so i'm glad that today april 19th we can make this happen so <laughs> yeah. yeah you've been you've been good uh no. being flexible with no. my schedule no no worries i i appreciate that um but yeah, Hank, thank you so much for for joining us on the Lemony Sound Stories podcast. And um, absolutely, yeah. This whole Glad podcast, yeah, everything about this is all about people's lemonade stand stories, right? Like okay. how they first got into their business to begin with, and when they were a kid, it could have been a lemonade stand, right? Um, but what about yourself? Like when you were a kid, were you like, I want to have my own lemonade stand, or did you have your own business growing up or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I ventured into, you know, little things because I was always like, how can we make some money? You know, so yeah. we, we were spray painting people's, um, people's house numbers on their curb. Yes. I remember going yeah. house to house. We'll, we'll do this for you. If, you know, we had our stencils out. Um, it probably wasn't until uh, just after high school that I thought, oh, I enjoy, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy speaking um yeah and then after that it just kind of take any opportunity that comes to me i probably the big thing that i if people say hey i want to do what you do or in any business really uh yeah. you gotta just you gotta just take every opportunity that comes to you um, yeah you know if the door opens take it don't be don't be scared it was you know someone said can you speak to this group on this and i'd always say yes i'd have no idea how to do that yeah. <laughs> i would have no idea how to speak yeah, to that yeah. group on that but i'd just say yes yes i can do it um and then i'd figure it out beforehand uh, that's so and, that, that dude that, that is so awesome and i love i love that piece of advice because there was a point when i was trying to figure out what i wanted to do with my life and uh, motivational speaking public speaking was definitely one of those things that i really wanted to attempt and do um, but then I was like, well, what credibility do I even have other than I like speaking, right? right. Which it, it sounds like you're like, well, I like speaking, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And for me, I was like, okay, I want to also build my credibility in something and then kind of go out and speak. And I also loved acting. I loved producing. So I'm like, I'm going to go make some movies. I'm going to go act in movies. I'm going to make some right. movies. And now I have a little bit of that credibility underneath my belt. And so it's actually kind of fun to go out and speak and talk about my experiences, which I've had the opportunity to do a couple of times. But I love your your uh, your thing of like saying, "Hey, I'm gonna just take whatever opportunities I have, 
and I'm going to speak, even yeah. if I don't know what it's about. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's really what I'm it was. Go for it and just I'll, see what I'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, and if it scares me, that's where I know I'm I'm going to grow a little bit. Yeah, because uh, I've never done anything like this before. But that's where yeah. I've gotten some of my favorite opportunities. You know, one of my my buddy said, "Come speak to my school." You know, my elementary school, and I said. I don't, I've never spoken to an elementary school. He said, yeah. oh, okay. it's, it can't be that different than what you've done. Yeah. Uh, and I said, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll figure it out. Yeah. And then I ended up doing, I ended up doing hundreds of elementary school assemblies, wow. you know? And, and so it's just one of those things where if you take the opportunity, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but you're right about credibility when it comes to speaking. I figured that out early on. If you want to get paid as a speaker, yes, uh, you better have some sort of credibility. So that's why I kept I, I noticed that you could do that route that you talked about, which is go, you know, have an impact in a certain, certain market and then come mm. talk about it. Uh, there's also, you can just, you know, be president of the United States or you sure. can yeah. be Oprah or something, and then someone yeah. will pay you a bunch of money. Uh, or, you know, you go do something no one's ever done before. You run 50 triathlons or something in 50 days yes. and, and you can go speak. And I didn't want, I wasn't willing to do any of those things. So okay. uh, mine was the other one uh, that you can do is education. Mm -hmm. So I went back and uh, went back to school and got a doctorate degree and uh, that adds some credibility. So that's, I, I tell people when they say, hey, I want to be a public speaker. I say there's three routes, basically. You can be a celebrity. Yeah. You can have your you know, your niche, like you're talking about with movies or whatever yeah. it is, you did something that no one else has done, or you get a doctorate degree uh, in a certain area and you, yeah. you can speak on that. So. so what was your, what was your doctorate degree in? So uh, I went back to school, BYU. Uh, well, I swear when I, when I, <laughs> when I left my yeah. master's degree, I was like, I'm never going back to school. Right. I well, I gone. said that about my undergrad and I haven't yeah. gotten back. Yeah. Still, so. <laughs> I was, yeah. I told my wife, I am, I'm not doing this, but then, you know, it started stirring in me. I better do this. So um, my uh, doctorate is in educational leadership and my dissertation uh, was on high trust relationships in schools. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's very applicable to a lot of different things, right? If someone says, Hey, come speak on marriage. I can speak on high trust relationships there. Or come speak yeah. on, come speak to a business. You know, the same principles apply. Yeah. Uh, so it's been, yeah, it's been really fun. It's been uh, fun. So in your own opinion, like what makes something like, this is like the worst way to say it, but high trustable, like, how do you make, how do you have oh, yeah, a relationship yeah. that has that level of high trust? Cause honestly, like right now we live in a society where it's hard to trust anything. We don't know what, what right. the truth is. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That was, it was a fun thing to discover. So yeah. um, if let's say that you're like, Hank, how do I, how do I increase trust with my business partners? How do I increase trust with my children? Right. Mm -hmm. My, even my spouse, how do I increase trust? Really? There's only one way to increase trust in any relationship. And that is through interaction that has four characteristics. It's frequent. So I don't, you know, see yeah. you once a year. I'm like, well, I, I don't know if I trust you. Yeah. Very frequent. Personal, meaning, uh, you know, we might be in the same room together, but it's not very personal. Like uh, Donovan Mitchell and I have a lot of interaction. It's not very personal because I watch him on TV, right? Right, so, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we, <laughs> um, it's it frequent. frequent. It is frequent. Yeah, it is yeah. frequent. Yeah. And it's positive. That's the next yeah. one. Frequent, personal, positive. And then probably the big one is low risk. Um, so I don't, you know, I'm not, I, I take my daughter to lunch and I don't say, okay, let's talk about, you know, your boyfriend, let's talk about your grades, right? Like I keep it low risk, um, for her. So she doesn't feel vul vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if I feed that fire with lots of frequent, personal, positive, low risk interaction, um, then, uh, the, the trust will start to build and you can get to a trusting relationship. Now want to go beyond that to a no. high, high trust relationship, then that involves more. But if someone's not willing to do the first part, you know, I want my yeah. kid to trust me, but I don't want to spend any time with them, right? Yeah. I want my business partners to trust me, but I don't really want to talk to them. Uh, then that's going to be, uh, that's going to be really, really difficult. Uh, you know, so. I, I always say, I always say that, um, like where you put your time shows where your value really is. Right. 100%. And so if you value someone, if you value something, then you'll put your time with that. You'll give your attention to that thing. And, exactly right. And, and I feel like right now with, um, honestly, with the world being where, where it is, with social media, with all these different stimuli co completely bombarding our senses all the time where we're not sure where we should put our attention to. If you choose to put your attention to someone in a world that's full of all kinds of stimuli, 
then like that person would be like, wow, like it screams that you're a valuable person. Exactly. Right. And and so I always, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a man of faith and I, I talk a lot about like just giving your time to God saying, Hey, that shows how you value God by spending time. And the thing is, (laughs) excuse me, he values you by spending time with you. And I think that's a, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Um, Now you did talk about people like, especially you're saying, Hey, and initially you got to kind of keep it low risk because people may not be ready to be vulnerable. That's exactly right. Um, Now I did hear something. uh, It was at one of my BYU professors. He was talking about what the word trust really means. And it means to be comfortable while you're vulnerable. All right. Which I love that definition because it's uh, it, it's like, hey, well, where's your vulnerability level right now? And how, how much are you willing to be comfortable in this space? And once you kind of practice, once you kind of go back and forth, then you can kind of increase it slower and slower uh-huh. and slower, right? That's exactly right. When you get yeah. to that, that trust level where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm willing to now risk a little bit. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's when um, the research starts to point to things like, if I, if I want to get that out of someone, if I'm like, you can trust me, right? Um, no. I, I kind of boiled it down in my dissertation to four things. Compassion, which is the other person knows that I truly care about them. That's, yeah. uh, I have their best interest in mind. I'm not going to use this information to hurt them in any way. So that's compassion. That also has to do with listening, right? Mm-hmm. Not listening to fix someone, not listening to, it just has to do with I'm I'm giving you my attention because you deserve it. Yeah. Uh, the other one is openness. So uh, how much information are we sharing? And are you hiding information from me that you know I would want? Yeah. Right. Uh, so openness. Then the next one is reliability or predictability. So mm-hmm. how consistent are you? So I'm giving you, right. I'm, I'm, you're compassionate, but you're compassionate like once every six months. Like, where are you? Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. You're not all that reliable. And the last one um, that moves you into really high trust is kind of a different one. It's not a character issue. We, those first three are all pretty much character. Yeah. Uh, compassion, openness, and reliability. The last one is more capability. And that's expertise. Mm. I trust you because you you know what you're talking about. You know what right? you're talking you about. You know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and I, there's a lot of people in my life who I think are compassionate, open and reliable. They just don't know what they're talking about. So I don't trust them in, sure. with certain things. Yeah, right? I don't trust them with, you know, talking about money or, or mechanics or something, because they just don't know. They have no clue. Right. Yeah. Like, so their once you not there. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to be in a high trust relationship, first, you do the interaction we talked about. Mm-hmm. And you keep feeding that fire. And then you can start working into, okay, they don't trust me, you know, in a, in a amazing way. Why not? Right. It's probably one of those four things, compassion, openness, reliability, or expertise. And it's nice to give people something that they can say, oh, I can do something about that. I can be more compassionate. I can be more open, right? Yeah. Oh, I can see that I'm not reliable. I'm not predictable. Right. So. I, I love that because now you've identified things for people that are trying to work on that relationship. They can do something. Other people. Yeah. They can do something about it. You're empowering them as opposed to like this daunting feeling of like, oh, how do I gain trust back or right. how do I do certain <laughs> things? Right. Yeah. And, and one of the other things that you really talked about was being reliable. I, I love it because that thing speaks louder than showing up, I feel. Right. You know, and, and saying, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to show through my actions. Because a lot of times, if your actions aren't matching your words, then exactly then reliability is. It's yep. right, right. And I, I know I've I've been in situations like that where people are like, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and that's what they say. And you know, as a producer, even more than acting, because acting, you know, I just go up and I show up and I act. But when I'm producing, it's like I'm kind of managing a team, right? And I'm kind of organizing certain things and. If people say what they're going to do certain things, but they just don't show up, they're not reliable. It's like, I just can't trust that they are going to fulfill their duties. Right. Like, and they know, might be amazing. They might be they very be talented. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I usually use the, um, the analogy with, uh, I'll, ask, I'll ask people that I speak to, what's the largest geyser at Yellowstone? And they always say Old Faithful. And it's not even close. Um, yeah. old, old Faithful, there's like one that's called Steamboat Geyser that's three times the size. No way. The reason everybody goes to Old Faithful is because it's consistent, right? Uh, they, know, they know when it's going to erupt. The other yeah. ones, you never know when they're going to erupt. So no one goes out there. Even uh, though they're bigger and greater, 
everyone goes to Old Faithful, right? Millions of people a year go to Old Faithful. And that's the idea of it's consistent. It's reliable. Yeah. It's not the greatest thing ever, but man, people invest in predictability. They invest yeah. in reliability. Um, yeah. You know, with airlines, they put out their, their, uh, their rankings every year of who's up most on time. Right. And oh, I'm looking cool. at that. I'm looking at it going, yeah. I need on time flights because there's nothing like scheduling something, having a big, you know, you're going to go out and speak somewhere and yeah, your flight's delayed. It's your late. flight's delayed. Well, it's interesting too. I, um, one of the things that investors ask when I, when we bring movie projects and stuff to them, because most investors are like, oh, it's a movie. No way, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but those that are willing and daring to like, look at a movie project will always be like, okay, the filmmaker that's made this, what other stuff has, have they made have they, and yeah, have they been have they successful? Finished? Yeah. Have they finished it? Have they been successful and what made them successful? And if you can kind of identify those things, those, those people are like likely the more, like they're the ones that are able to get the money more. Right. Right. Even um, if they're more expensive, even if they're more like expensive, I have a mechanic that I won't go to anybody else and they charge more than the other places, mm. but man, they fix everything every time on time. And I'm like, I don't care. That's worth yeah. it to me. Yeah. Right? Charge what you want. You you're reliable. You're reliable and, and your service is fantastic. Yep. It's that that's you know awesome. what you're doing. There's the expertise idea. You know mm -hmm. what you're doing. Yeah. So dude, I, I love it too, because the whole thing is like everything that you boil down to is like just four things or like, yep. you know, just a couple of things, right? And that is what makes it awesome because people can now say, it's not like this huge checklist of like, now I got to do this and now I got to do this, right? So. Right, yeah, like I can go into a business, we can do a little survey with all the employees. We can yeah. say, okay, here's 30, here's 30 questions. And then I can identify which one their leadership is struggling with, compassion, openness, reliability, reliability yeah. or expertise. Uh, and then we can focus on that. And yeah. it brings the trust level up. And when we get there, let's look at the others. Let's look at the others where you were a little low. And you yeah. can do it in a marriage too, yeah. right? If I was talking to a couple and they're struggling with trust, um, you know, something happened where someone broke trust and we can go through it and say, okay, what's, what's the problem here other than she just doesn't trust me. Well, there's got to, there, why? Why yeah. doesn't she trust you? Are you not yeah. compassionate? Are you not open? Have you ever hid information from her? Okay. Or are you not reliable? Do you say something and do another, right? Or is yeah. it that she just doesn't trust that you know what you're doing? Yeah. Right. And can we give you an education so you do know what you're doing? Yeah. So yeah, I, 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 I have a feeling like if uh, I, I'm not, I'm not married, but uh when I get to that point, it's, I have like my, my fear is like, I think I have all those except for the expertise part of like, right, I have yeah. no clue what I'm doing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and that's, and that's I got to like work on that. I know yeah. that's hard. And it, it's fun to give people examples and it's okay if someone doesn't trust you with certain expertise, right? Like my wife sure. is not going to, my wife doesn't want me to do the drywall or the tile yeah. in the bathroom. And it's not because she doesn't love me. She just right. doesn't. She just not doesn't trust my expertise. And it took me a while to figure that out. Like, why do we hire it out? I can do it. She's like, well, yeah. someone else can do it better and faster. <laughs> and yeah. and, and okay. that's, and okay. that's what I've learned as well, actually, as a, as a filmmaker is I've learned the importance of delegation, right? right. And being like hey, someone who knows what they're doing. Yes. Do it. We will hire those people. We'll get the money and we'll hire those people rather than me trying to figure it out myself because that exactly right that's like spreading yourself too thin you get worn out and then you're not able to like be as compassionate you're a little bit more short fused yeah so that's ex oh. that's exactly right if and yeah. that's the that's the wonder of our system is people can specialize right and yeah uh, and and become really good at that certain thing and we can we can bring them in so yeah it's been a fun journey i'm going to mm. i in my back of my mind i'm like oh, i've got to write this book right like i've got yeah. to write this book on on high trust relationships it's just something that sits in the back of my mind uh that i, I want to do so i'm hoping, hoping it's speaking it to you and maybe this podcast right now is inspiring It'll be the you this catalyst. Is it. yeah, yeah go ahead and start writing right now i'll, I'll wait i'm, I'm patient right, here we go i'll just start typing here we go mind. yeah whatever whatever's coming to your mind um so in your own life hank have you have you have, have there been any relationships that have been that have required a lot of like work to get to that trust level oh absolutely every single yeah. one of them Okay. Um, the, probably the, the misnomer or the myth is, oh, we've been married for 30 years. Therefore we have a high trust relationship. That's not always true. Or I gave birth to it, right? We have a high trust relationship. Um, yeah. it, uh, uh, someone might say to me, how come my, my kid, my teenager trusts their friends and not me. And I'll say, well, who do they have all the frequent personal, positive, low risk interaction with? 
Yeah. It's their friends. They don't have any yeah. frequent personal positive low risk interaction with you. Whenever you talk to them, you're trying to fix them, right? Yeah. That would get old for anybody. You know, yeah. Taryn, if you call me every day and you're like, Hank, let's talk about how you can be better. I'd yes. be like, you know what? <laughs> why I think I'm we, good. Yeah. Why do we have this phone call every day? Right. Yeah. So what if we just hang out? What if we just, you know, I, and I'll tell them, go take your kid to lunch uh, and don't fix them. Just talk to them. Mm. Just, just talk to them. Cause that's what they do with their friends. And that's why they trust their friends. And that's dangerous. Trusting eighth graders with other eighth graders. Right? Oh that's man. A, I know that's yeah. a, that's a dangerous road to walk on the blind leading the blind. Right. Yeah. So, no, um, I, I, I love that. And especially when you're saying like, Hey, spend time with the purpose of just hanging out, like not with any other intention in mind other than just like hanging out and just, just enjoying each other's company. That's you it. Know? That's it. Yeah. And you don't have to solve all the world's problems right now. And we do that as parents because we care more like, Oh man, they're, they're messing up. Uh, but those high trust um, conversations will happen naturally as you build the relationship. They'll, they'll mm. happen. It'll happen naturally. I remember one woman I was talking to, her son was just really struggling. I mean, even by 15, he was in rehab. I mean, it was, oh, she man. was, she was, uh, she was really scared. And I said, so tell me about, you know, what, what you do together. And she said, well, you know, he plays those video games and I, I, I don't like those. I don't know what to do with those. And I said, okay, well, maybe you could give it a try. Talk to her a couple of weeks later. And she said, it's not working. I said, tell me about it. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. She said, well, I decided to go knit by him while he plays his video games. Like I go down there and knit. And yeah. I said, and how's that working out for you? <laughs> and she yeah. said, not very well. It's, yeah. He's not talking to me. And I said, I, I know what you have to do. And she said, please don't tell me. I'm like, well, will he knit? <laughs> she yeah. said, no. I said, well, then you're probably going to have to start playing. I talked to her a couple of months later and she said, you know, what? I've gotten pretty good at like Halo. Yeah. <laughs> She's <laughs> this 45 year old woman. Yeah. Uh, she said, I've gotten pretty good. But over the course of them playing together, he was shocked that she would play. Sure. Right. He's yeah. like, you want to play with me? And she said, yeah, let me see how to, how, and he taught her a little bit. And then she said, a couple of weeks, we, we would play every day. A couple of weeks into it, he said, he said, it just kind of randomly came up. He just said, mom, I don't want to be this way my whole life. Right. Like, mm. I don't, I don't want to be a druggie. Mm. Uh, and she's, she's like, oh, really? You know, keep playing. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, you know, that's good yeah. to hear. It, it, it happens naturally. Mm -hmm. These high trust, these conversations we want to have with our kids will happen naturally if we'll just spend, if we'll just invest our time into them, right? Your kids know how valuable time is to you. Your kids yeah. know. So the moment you focus on them, put your phone away and say, I'm with you, 100% with you, that screams yeah. you are a valuable person. Mm, right? I love that. And it's like that saying like, hey, people... Uh, Oh my gosh. I started saying the quote. I don't even know how to say it. It's like, people don't uh, No, They don't care how much, you know, you know until you right. know how much you care. Right. That's right. The one. That's exactly right. right. Um, well, it's, it's interesting. My dad and I um, just all through me growing up, uh, it was one of those relationships where I felt like he was always trying to fix me, trying to tell me all the things I was doing right. wrong. And I'm like, Oh dad, come on. Like, is there anything else we can talk about other than all the things that I'm not doing? Right. Right. <laughs> but um but as I got older, um, it's interesting. One of the things that he always wanted to do uh, uh, do with me was to play tennis. He, he, he loved playing tennis. And I remember as a kid hating it. I just could not hold the rackets like right. I was very right. weak. And, like every time I hit the ball, it would like go <laughs> wherever. Well, funny enough, tennis is now my favorite sport. Like mm -hmm. I play it all the time. And so my dad and I, like, that is our thing. We just we go, bond. we go play and we bond. And it's so amazing. And, and it's crazy. Cause like my dad is not nearly as good as he used to be. And uh, so it's not like we're com playing competitively or anything. It doesn't matter. It's just, we're just having fun. We're having fun and it's enjoyable. And I think if people, uh, if people can learn anything in life, it's like never under underestimate the power of fun. And right. like, if you can have fun with uh, someone that you love and like have a, a, like a nurturing, awesome relationship with that person, then that trust just kind of comes, right? It comes. It's a natural fruit yeah. of investing into someone, your time and, and your, you know, just, it's simply just spending time with that person uh, yeah. and not having an agenda. 
And also making sure it's personal, right? If you and your dad just watch movies together, that's different than playing tennis because sure. the, the personal aspect of that is you, we have to engage with each other. We have to talk, right? So, yeah. so maybe watching, you know, Grey's Anatomy together, you're like, well, it's not super high trust. Well, it, yeah. you could do the same thing by yourself, right? Sure. It, it really doesn't, it, it doesn't take this other person to be part of that interaction mm -hmm. so the more personal it is the better like you like this tennis i mean you're gonna yeah. have to interact you're gonna have to talk about what happened and talk yeah. before and after and and yeah. during because half, yeah. half the time we're playing we hit into the net and as we we're gonna go pick up the balls we end up not even going back to, like the, to go play we just start talking on the other side of the net so it's kind of fun that's, how that works that's yeah it's absolutely you know? beautiful and we love humans love those kind of connections i yeah. i'll ask a group of people I'll say how many of you ever been in the restaurant with people you love and the waitress or the waiter server comes over and says you know we're closing up now right like, and oh, yeah. like how long have we been here yeah because we love that connection yeah. you even go out yeah. to the parking lot and you keep talking yeah right until pretty Absolutely. soon the, that's the yeah. parking lot discussion that's what yeah. we call it you the, know the servers are all going home they're going <laughs> home and they're like still hey out they're talking yeah you're still hanging out because our our i think the human spirit loves that connection Absolutely. right they're building trust with someone i always say that life happens in, in the in-between moments yeah. You know, that's where it really happens. I mean, some, you know, we're trying to go from point A to point B, like, hey, we got to accomplish this goal to which we'll accomplish that goal and yada, yada, yada. But really in between all of those trying to accomplish things when we're actually interacting with people and, and joking around and having fun. Like one of the reasons I love making movies is because I get to make them with my friends. Now the ultimate goal is, hey, we got to get through this day. We right. got to get all of this stuff shot. But in between all of that stuff, between the takes, when we're laughing, we're joking around, we're messing up and we're like, just, just like, you know, bloopers and all this type of stuff that to me are the precious moments. Oh, yeah. And, um, and so I, I'm always like, guys, like we've got to like spend a lifetime creating memories because that's, that's where it's all at. So. That's exactly right. That's why I tell my students, I say, you, you know, figuring out your career is figuring out if you'll do this, you'll be happy figuring out what yeah. you love to do and find a way to make money doing yes. that thing, right? What do you yeah. love to do? Don't, don't focus on how much you'll make at first. Just tell me what you like to do, because if you're yeah. going to spend 50 hours, 60 hours a week doing something, you better love it or yeah. else you're going to be a miserable human being. Right? Yeah. Like, you're going to have no fun. Um, I, I had a buddy who, who said, I'm going to be a dentist. And I said, do you love it? And he said, no, but you make a lot of money. And I said, okay. And it wasn't, you know, six years later, he said, I, I had to I had to switch you had yeah. I, had, I had to go do something else because I was a miserable husband, a miserable father, because I'm doing mm. something I don't like. So, yeah. And again, I mean, you could say, well, I love making, you know, I love making movies. Therefore, I'm going to, you know, focus on this. But you've got to do, eh, you've got to figure out how to make money making movies. Right. Too, right. Like, <laughs> right. Absolutely. Like, it's got all these shows. Yeah. You got to like figure, you got to figure out that component. Right. And I think that's, that's the key is, um, is like like what you just said your life so much of it is spent in your career right so much right. of it is spent doing something like that and so if you're not enjoying what you're doing for so much of your life then of course it's going to translate into having miserable times at home at home with your kids yeah. you know sunday and night becomes becomes horrible because you know that tomorrow morning you have to go do something you hate, hate. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's just not a, that's just not a way to live. It, it yeah. really isn't a way to live. Now, you know, when we were younger, we probably had to do those things because, yeah. you know, we're just trying to get through school or just trying to, you know, trying to get, but you always have that dream out there of, I'm going to do what I love one day. Right. Yeah. I, I remember the last final I took at BYU, like when it finished and I knew I was going to graduate, like, I can't even describe the euphoric feeling I had <laughs> I'm was, done. when I left that testing center and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this, I, I didn't know that this kind of joy could exist because <laughs> I what I didn't have plans to go to like grad school. I was like, no, right? I, that I was knew it. what I wanted to do. And I was and now like, I was going to go, go and do it. And, um, and it's funny because people are like, Hey, you know, enjoy these moments in school. Cause you're going to miss it. And, there are certain things I miss, like, you know, like the friendships and stuff and, yeah. and, you know, some lectures and everything. But when I go to school again, visit 
on occasion and I see the students getting ready for like their finals and I see the, the zombified look in their eyes. I'm You're like, no, I, don't, I don't know if I missed this. I don't miss I, this. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't miss this at all, actually. And so people have said that about about kids too. like enjoy the diaper phase. You'll miss it. And I'm like, yeah. I don't miss it. Yeah, I don't miss it at all. <laughs> yeah, I miss, you know, the fun having a little baby, but I don't miss it. Yeah. The, the work part of of it yeah so no that's, that's i think you're i think you're awesome. right on well you have to yeah. you have to at least have a dream of doing what you love yes um and be focusing on that dream but you and i worked odd jobs right i i mean totally. i worked i was cleaning a building i think during school i was oh, yeah. working at a rec center i was reffing basketball games i was doing whatever it took to make money so i'm not saying no. don't take any job besides what you love but when you're getting into a career Right. When you're like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. We better find something that feels like this. I use my gifts. Yeah. Using my gifts every day. I think, uh, but for me, like, I still made sure that my jobs were fun. (laughs) I still was like, I was like, look, they're not going to be my career, but I'm going to make sure that I'm having fun with it. Yeah. And so I remember like, cause the very first job I ever did was like a, a telemarketing job. It was like seven bucks an hour. And I remember being like, oh, so this is what it means to be miserable. Okay, All right, this is great. I, was, I wasn't sure, and so now I know. Um, right. I, I decided, hey, I'm never gonna do a job where the sole purpose of it is just to make money. Right. Like I need to make sure that there's some level of fulfillment. And so, uh, you know, after my mission, I, I ended up working at the MTC, which was a blast because I loved teaching the missionaries. But then I went and, and was a bellman at Sundance. And it was so fun interacting with the guests. Oh, I taught snowboarding I up there. I'm like, come on, like I'm teaching snowboarding. Like I get to go snowboard for, for work. It's insane. And so. Yeah. It's the difference I, between I, like a, I call it yeah. a job career or a calling, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have a job, that's fine, but let's move, move you towards a career. And then yeah. after you have a career, that's awesome. Let's move you towards a calling. Okay. Right. A, a so, purpose. Yeah. Just, yeah just, okay. So you know what? I'm glad we're here because I wanted to kind of dive in a little bit more with this. Um, what would you consider to be your calling or your purpose in life? Oh, that's, that's, that's a great question. So um, Martin Seligman, I wrote a book on happiness. Honestly, it sold dozens of copies, but uh, I learned a lot in writing the book. And um, Martin Seligman, he's kind of the father of positive psychology. He, mm-hmm. he has found that human beings kind of have three levels of happiness. The first one that they go through as kids and as teenagers is pleasure, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't last very long, but we're just chasing yeah. the next pleasure. Candy, new clothes, whatever it is. Yeah. Popularity. Reebok said, pumps. Yeah, oh, yeah. Remember that? that? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. And then uh, he said, we, we keep having that pleasure as part of our life. That's an important part of life. But eventually we move to a phase uh, he calls, like I said, career, or um, he calls it flow, this idea of engagement. Yes. I'm doing what I- M- Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. I don't know if you know who that is. He's like the father of flow. Mihai okay. Csikszentmihalyi. But yeah. he always talks about that, that the flow state, right? Right. And that you're doing good- something you really enjoy. Yes. You're using your, what you feel are your gifts mm-hmm. and you are, you're just in it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And, and it, it happens like I'll ask a, um, whenever I go to the grocery store, I'll, you know, I try to call people by name, my cashier or whatever. And I'll say, how's work. And they'll say something like, oh, it's been slow. And I'm like, oh, is that not good? And they're like, no, I like it when it's busy. And I'll say, why? And they're like, it makes the time go fi- by fast, which is, mm-hmm. I'm like, is that the point to make the time go by fast, right? Like, mm-hmm. I just want to die. I just want to get over. Yeah. Um, but that's not what they mean. They mean that when they're interacting with people, uh, it just, they're into a flow. They're engaged, right? Time just flies because they're having so much fun. You probably do this with movie making. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. a 12-hour day, you're like, what? Yeah. Well, it's seven? Oh, we got to wrap up, right? Yeah. So that's engagement. And then he said, there's a higher level, even for those who are in that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's, they get to a point where they want more of a calling. And it's where they're not only using their gifts every day, but they're using their gifts uh, in a cause that is bigger than themselves, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, that's going to outlive them. Yeah. So uh, the idea there is what's your calling Meaning, are you, you know, as a filmmaker, you're using your gifts. It's also, okay, you're going to get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm, I've done that. I've, I've loved it. Now, how can I use these gifts to further a mission of some sort? Something that's bigger than me that's going to I'm I'm literally there right now. 
Like, right. I want to, I want to like, do something bigger. Yes. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's a beautiful thing when people get there. I mean, that's, we're very blessed to be able to actually think about that question of yeah. where do, how am I going to use my gifts to, to further this, this mission, whatever, whatever that is something positive. Right. Uh, so for me, yeah, I'm there. I, I think I'm getting there too. Like, uh, you know, as a, as a young dad, I was always very focused on, you know, I've got to, I've got to provide, right. Got to yeah. provide, got to provide. Uh, but now um, I'm blessed enough to say I've provided uh, where everybody has sufficient, right. For yeah. what they need. Uh, and now it's like, okay, now you choose between projects instead of just choosing projects because, you know, they bring an in income. You're going, mm-hmm. does this project help me further my calling? right? What, what's my calling? For me personally, you know, as I've thought about it, and I don't think anybody ever gets it right down, right? Yeah. Maybe they do. I, I, not me. I'm kind of open to, you know, what, what's behind door number three, right? What, what is that? But um, for me personally, uh, it's, it's been a lot with uh, youth. Um, I try to be the youth speaker I needed, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm like, uh, here's what I would have liked someone to say to me. Um, I also I like humor. Um, Me too. Yeah. yeah I just think yeah. laughter and learning are not enemies and you can have a great time. And, and I use way more humor than I need to because I like it. Right. Yeah. I, I like using humor. Um, and then also for me, it's faith, right. Mm-hmm. Helping people draw towards a, a higher power. Um, and then, um, also for me, I think it's relationships, like we talked about with those trust. Yeah. I, when I, when I, the idea that, you know, someone might listen to our podcast today and think, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to change some things in that relationship. To me, that's, that's golden. Like that feels yeah. like a calling to me. I'm helping yeah. a marriage, helping a family, helping a best friend, whatever it is. I just, to me, that feels that it's, it's just as good or if not more, uh, more than making money. I mean, it's interesting. Like, have you ever heard of the series, the chosen? Have you heard of that series? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a great In fact, series. I talked to the director the other day yeah. and he said, you're Hank Smith. You like the chosen before it was cool. And I was like, yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So Dallas is a good friend of mine. I'm, I'm actually okay. in the show. Um, oh, the fantastic. I, the, the episode hasn't come out yet, but, um, right. But I was, um, but I'm, so I'm good friends with a lot of the cast. And so I was having them on, on the podcast, right? And we were kind of talking about things and it, it, all single, all the ones that I had on were all saying something very similar, which was like, you know, for us, it's not just acting in the show. It's just knowing like that there is an element of healing. And every single one of them talks about like their own personal lives and the struggles that they've had. And now it's like, now we've been kind of given like a platform to use these struggles to empower other people. And I'm like, dude, what a powerful calling that is yep. like that. That is so powerful and it can uplift people up. It, it's amazing. So, and, it's, and I think that's why the show works. I think Dallas yeah. was, I think Dallas was raised up for this, right? Like, yeah, this I, is, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, and it's a perfect time. It's exactly what the world needs. Uh, and to me, you know, and any chance I can to be involved, you know, I've done a little bit um, social media wise to be involved. Uh, and they're saying, well, you know, how can we, what can we do for you? I'm like, no, let's push this forward. Let's get yeah. it to a billion people. Like I, yeah. I, I want to be goal, part right? of this. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be part of this. Yeah. Um, I'm not the best guy in the show, but it's, it's great. <laughs> oh, okay. You're a bad guy. <laughs> well, no, I'm not a bad guy. I'm just a selfish guy, I guess, I suppose. Okay. But, uh, All right. All but right. it was fun. It was, it was a fun role. Um, <laughs> did they say you're going to be really good at this? We know you're, you're like, you know what? Listen, you're the perfect guy for the selfish role. No acting required. <laughs> just be yourself. Just be, you know, just be yourself and we'll interact with I'm like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> what are we doing guys? <laughs> uh, like, no. Karen, we've got the role for you. We got the role for you, buddy. No, it was actually really <laughs> funny how, how that role came about. But, um, so I was going to ask you, we're just kind of shifting topics just a little bit. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. You you talk a lot about happiness and, and, mm-hmm. and positive psychology and things like that. Um, now we were discussing this a little bit earlier that the last six months for you, especially yeah. have been dealt very, very heavy blows, a lot of lemons in your life. Right. And yeah. one of the things we talk about is how do you turn 
lemons into lemonade. Um, right. And I know you've had some pretty heavy stuff. Are you, are you okay to talk about some of those? Oh, things? sure. Yeah, absolutely. So life was kind of going along pretty well. And then COVID hit and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my income was tied to me traveling and, you know, doing tours. I do tours of Israel and, um, and all that kind of shut down. So we got, but you know what? We were financially kind of smart in that we had savings. And yeah. so, you know, we're not in a big, we're not in crisis mode. Right. Uh, and so then last September, um, just a couple of, just had a bad week, right? Like, yeah. uh, just you're going, oh man, like this, the septic tank backed up into the basement and, uh, my, we had a little puppy and it disappeared, just gone, which you wouldn't think is a huge trial, but man, when you're a dad and you're watching yeah. your daughter, just, she's broken over the loss of this little puppy. Of course. Uh, and it's just gone. Never got it back. I have no idea where it went, what happened. Um, and then uh, that, so that was like Monday, Thursday, and then Saturday, my dad has a stroke mm. and ends up having emergency brain surgery. And I was like, wow, what a week, <laughs> right? Like that's quite mm. a week. Well, keep going on that. Uh, he was a full-time caretaker for my mother. Uh, and so there was a lot to do there because um, a lot of her caretaking was in his head right? Like, okay, was him because he'd been taking care of her for a decade for a decade. Okay. And so you're walking into a situation where you can't talk to him because he's out. Yeah. And we're trying to figure it out me and my my sister and I and my and my brother and then um, through that, uh, my brother, uh, well, all three of us contracted COVID um, mm. from, you know, wherever we we were, we didn't get it from each other, we got it from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and um, so my brother ended up passing away in December um, wow. from COVID. He was in the hospital about three weeks. And that's my oldest brother. He's just 54, you know, a young guy. Mm. Um, and then, you know, you're dealing with that. Uh, I had, I had him in the hospital. I, it was kind of, you know, you have to find the humor in it. I had him in the hospital, my mom in a care a care facility and my dad in the hospital so that was my whole day was just <laughs> and my going sister from, had covid and she oh was man. laid up at home so it was me going from i just went hospital for three hours to the care center for three hours to the mm -hmm. hospital for three hours just nine hour days um, talking to doctors and things i got a quite i actually got a little mini medical degree uh, wow. over that month because <laughs> right? i was learning new a expertise lot. new expertise yeah i was like right. hey i know all these words now yeah uh, so then, um, yeah. And then in January, just suddenly, well, it's kind of a, kind of an interesting story. So that was December and my, one of my best friend calls me from California and he said, I want, we're going to start this podcast. And yeah. I said, I don't have time to start a podcast named Steve Sorensen. I said, I don't have a time, Steve, to start a podcast. Like I, I my brother just died. I got my dad yeah. in the hospital. So anyway, he said, well, we got to do it. But he said, I just feel it. So, um, okay. So we get started in this, this podcast, it's called follow him. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, Steve ends up passing away in January. Do you want to start the podcast? Yeah, Just 60 years old bishop oh out word. in California. Um, one of my closest friends and it just had, he apparently had a heart attack or whatever it was in January. Yeah. And so we're going, Oh no, what do we do? Um, yeah. of course his family's amazing. And they said, we got to keep the podcast going. It was something he wanted. Um, and I, I can see why I think he was pushing so hard to get it started. Yeah. Uh, Cause I was like, Steve, give me a couple months. Right. Um, and then, yeah. And then, um, just this last month, uh, my dad, um, was doing really well, uh, had a great mm. day on a Wednesday was up with my mom and, uh, mm. they were both at a care facility as he was rehabbing from the stroke and, yeah, he laid back in his favorite chair and uh, they called me on Thursday morning, said he didn't wake up. So, mm. um, so it was unexpected. Um, but he, you know, there's always that, you know, when, when your dad's 77, and, you know, on paper, it looks, it looks perfect, right? If someone were to say, mm. listen, your dad lived to be 77, he laid back in his favorite chair and fell asleep. Like, that's the way that's what you that's the way you want to go. Yeah. But we were just, you know, so unexpected yeah. that you're like, kind of shocked. So yeah, so three really, um, three close deaths in, you know, just these four months have been, yeah. have been kind of rough. Um, but 
I'll tell you, I, I feel okay. And I, I have to check myself going, am I just hiding my feelings here? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or am I just throwing a rug over it? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. And, do I, and um, I think uh, I, I'm a big man of faith. I think that, that the Lord has been good to us uh, through this. We've had a lot yeah. of uh, really neat experiences. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's something to be said for keeping up what those, those little things that help you, you know, that give you a little brush stroke of happiness. It yeah. maybe not, doesn't look very impressive by itself, but brush stroke after brush stroke creates yeah. quite a masterpiece. Right. Yeah. So there's little things that, um, that I learned in even just the process of writing the book, uh, about happiness, like, um, just, mm. just being healthy, getting enough sleep, um, spending time with happy people, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, making sure uh, that I'm having, that I keep that personal contact, having in-person conversations. These are all very tiny things, but those, they, they're, they're like little brushstrokes and they make a significant difference. So, uh, but to say that I've been happy the entire time is not true. I don't want anybody no. who is going through something right now saying, oh, I should be more like that. No, uh, there were times where I was uh, I, angry yeah. at, angry at heaven, angry at, uh, you know, the yeah. world, um, kind of frustrated. And I think that's, that's, that's normal and healthy yeah. and human, uh, to be, yeah. to be upset. And I was, there was, there was times I was upset. I don't want anybody to go, Oh, wow. He's, you know, never, he just was happy through the whole thing. No, I wasn't yeah. smiling at every funeral. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't super excited about, um, you know, the, the hospitals and, mm. the, you know, but, uh, you know, I, here I am where yeah. through at least that part of the storm and, uh, you, you know, know, it's, it's still, it's, still being okay. It's interesting. Cause like since September of last year to now I've had six people close to me pass away through different oh. ways. Like some, some COVID related one was my mission president, which was a huge blow. Um, oh. and then, uh, but the thing is, it's like, even though that happened, I have to say, um, for me, there is this underlying peace that I just can't deny, you know, I, I just can't deny it. And, um, it, that, that was the thing that like, I would feel like really got me through. Cause like, of course it's a shock, like a, a buddy of mine, you may know him. His name is Colin Karchner. Oh he, yeah. Like, you know, you know, Colin, right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, he that became was, pretty popular. It was a huge was thing. Just sudden, just so sudden. I mean, we went to high school together. I was friends with him since I was 13 years old. Oh. Right. And, and in fact, I was even talking to him before and I said, dude, I'd love to have you on this podcast. Like, you know, and I was filming a movie. So I said, listen, after the movie's over, let's get you, let's get you on the podcast. And we were kind of talking about it. And then he passed. Yeah. And um, it was such a shocking thing. Cause it was like, Oh my gosh, like he was my age. Like he was my buddy. Like I, yeah. I have so many memories with him. Right. But I got to tell you, like, like for me, like, like my faith is, is so like, it, it is my saving grace. I would say it Absolutely. is a thing that has given me so much hope, so much joy during these times that just seem so traumatic and difficult and hard. Um, but it's, it, you know, as I'm hearing the things that you're talking about and, and, and it kind of like what you were saying, I had to kind of check myself because I'm like, Am I just masking my feelings? Because I'm right. a person. <laughs> yeah. I, I felt like I was doing that a lot. I'm like, am I just because sometimes I tend to overcompensate and I don't accept grief. Sometimes I right. um I don't allow myself to grieve. But how did you allow yourself to to grieve during those tough times when you're such a happy person? Uh yeah. I and I and I do think that that is crucial, that grief and faith can exist in the same in the same place. Uh, they're not opposites. So that somehow we don't think, oh, I'm grieving. I, yeah. I must not have enough faith. No. Uh, in fact, uh, in, in our scripture, uh, there's a commandment. Thou shalt grieve them that die, right? You thou shalt weep yeah. for, the, for them that die. So uh, there was a lot of, yeah, a lot of weeping, a couple of, couple of just breakdowns in the afternoon where I needed to go be by myself. Um, but I, I never, I, I think sometimes we fight that and that can create a lot of stress, unneeded stress. Um, yeah. when we're like, oh, I'm feeling this way, I got to run away from it. I've got to fight it instead of just sitting in it for a little while, uh, and just letting it because grief, yeah. the grief, the, the, 
the terrible emptiness of grief is part of healing. Yeah. Um, and it's part, you know, mourning that person. So you can, so you can heal and, and move forward. Your life is different now. Um, yeah. you know, I, it's never going to be the same. And sometimes we think, well, if I, if I stop grieving, mm-hmm. that means I'm not honoring them because life is the same. Well, life is never going to be the same. Um, yeah. but you can honor them through, you know, I would think to myself, well, what would my brother, my, my buddy, Steve, what would my dad say? They'd say, what do you do? You know, get yourself up. Let's go. We've, yeah. you know, you got, you got a short amount of time. Let's, yeah. let's get back to work. Right. And so I, I've, yeah. I've, I've done a little bit of that. I've done a little bit of just distracting myself, right. Sure. Which isn't a bad, it's not a bad thing just to distract yourself. And then I do a lot of journaling mm-hmm. uh, as well. It helps me get, you know, I just feel like it's a bit of a release. I can get those feelings out uh, recorded. Um, I think that's mm-hmm. an, imp- at least for me, that's become an important part. Yeah. You know, there's this, uh, are you familiar with the movie Lord of the Rings? Have you, yeah, are you familiar yeah. with those movies? Yeah, yeah. Love them. They're like my favorite. And oh. at the very end of Return of the King, when, uh, you know, everything's done, the, the ring is burned and, and Frodo's back. I'm spoiler alert, guys. If you guys haven't seen that <laughs> movie, though, you need it. to go watch it. I apologize. Yeah. I've spoiled it for you, but it's also 20 years too late. But um, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Frodo goes back to the Shire and he realizes that it's just, they've evolved. Like they've, they've grown and it's like, you know, how do you go back to your old life when you realize like there is no going back? You know, there's some wounds you just can't heal, right? I'm like literally quoting the movie, but he was saying that um, they, they did say the Shire, but they didn't save it for, for himself. And so he felt he needed to kind of move on with his journey. And I think that's a beautiful thing where we realize like, hey, you know what? Life is about evolving and you may not go back to where you used to be, even though it was a good time. It was a, it was a beautiful time. Like I remember my high school friends being my life and I'm like, guys, we've got to like live next to each other. We're going to hang right. out all the time. <laughs> it doesn't happen, you know, yeah. but things have evolved and things have moved on. And if you try to go back, it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel right because your spirit has evolved. And I think all of these lives that you've been so in touch with and that were so close to you as they've passed on, in a sense, you've also kind of passed on you, you've, you've evolved. And, and now you can, you have that much more compassion, that much more love, that much more ability and willingness to have the high trust relationships with more people. Yeah. But um, there's but nothing that'll cure. Like that. There's there's nothing that'll cure the idea of like the rat race. I've got to have more money. I've got to have a yeah. bigger house. I've got to like going through tragedy. I'll, you just don't care about those things anymore. Yeah. You're more concerned with relationships uh, than the car you drive, right? Yeah. Um, you're more concerned with um, you know, with how you're spending your time versus how you're spending your money. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just uh, it's something that um, yeah it it's grief changes you. It it really does. It changes you. And, and there is something to be said for um, believing or knowing that you get to see these people again. Um, That's, that's, that's a very important part of, of my theology Mm -hmm. uh, as, as a human being. Um, And it's not necessarily, oh, it's okay. I'm going to see them again. It's, I have some responsibilities because I'm going to see them again. Sure. Uh, I'm going to have to give an accounting, right? I, I, I want to be able to say, I, I carried on your work. I, I did was with my dad, right? I, I kept up, I took care of my wife and kids. Cause that was, he would always say that to me, you know, you yeah. take care of your wife and kids. That's number one. You take care of your wife and kids. So I want to be able to say, I took care of my wife and kids. So it's not only this, you know, a balm, right? Yeah. This healing that I get to see these people again, but that it's also, there's some responsibility there that I think is yeah, helps propel us forward. Uh, in I, action. I was seeing uh, this, uh, this Twitter, I, I, this, uh, I think that something you posted, saying like, uh, and I'm totally paraphrasing, but it, it said something like, hey, no matter, no amount of like, you know, like material things that you can possess can ever compete with God's love. Right, right. 
and it's just there there is nothing else yeah. and i've and i've been able to, just like you i've been able to have some cool opportunities of travel and sure. uh, you know and been able to have a nice paycheck every once in a while where you're going wow right this this is yeah. awesome and it gives you a little blip of like woohoo yeah uh, but really it 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 doesn't change life all that much your income once you give a get above poverty level, you know, get up around seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year, income has nothing to do with happiness. Yeah. Uh, it's zero, which is hard for some people to believe. It's just like they tied money and happiness so closely together that they think yeah. the more of one means more of the other, uh, yeah. and that's that's it's just simply not true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that there are better experiences than than the look at me moments. Right. Yeah. Like, look, look at me, look how either famous or rich or whatever I am. And I'm whatever. I'm not, I don't want to say, Oh, don't go do things, you yeah. know, go travel, go get experiences, do what you can. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing that I don't think compares with this, the spiritual connection that you, yeah. that's available to anyone who wants it. Um, there was this quote, I believe uh, Jim Carrey was saying it and he was saying something to the effect of like, I hope everyone in the world can get everything they've ever wanted only to know that once they get it, they realize, oh, that was never enough. Because that wasn't yeah. what they were really, really wanting to begin with. I heard that from that. him. Yeah, he said, I, I wish everybody could be rich and famous because you'd realize how nothing it is. How nothing it is. Being, right. being rich and famous. Yeah, being And we all, and so many of them are like, oh, that's the dream, right? That's yeah. the dream. Um, and I've had a tiny taste of it. Not, not very yeah. much in my own little sphere. I've had a tiny taste of it. And I realized, yeah, it's just not important. It's more yeah. about our calling in life. What are we going to do? Yeah, I love gonna, that. I mean, I think we're going to help people th that that that's so powerful, man, because like I was in California doing the same thing and only to realize like, OK, this is not fulfilling, <laughs> you yeah. know, and and so I'm like, I got to like reshift things and like think about like my calling, like you said. So yeah. uh, I what do I want to what do I want? Yeah. What do I, how am I going to measure my success? Right. How am I going to measure my life? No, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Hank, this has been so great. And I, and I want to just oh, wrap thanks. it up with just a, a couple of like couple quick questions. OK. okay. I'll try to be quick. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're good. What is your greatest source of joy right now? Oh, uh, definitely my wife and and children. Um, definitely my wife and children in those relationships, and also my, you know, uh, my siblings and I have gotten closer. Um, my my sister awesome. and I have gotten closer. So those those relationships uh, are definitely a source of joy. And then um, uh, just holy holy things. Yeah. scripture and prayer and uh those to me have become even more of sources of energy and courage yeah. yeah i love that that's a great answer i love that okay what is your greatest fear right now oh goodness um there's a <laughs> um <laughs> there's you know there's a lot um i'm not over i'm not overly scared about the future of the world I don't watch enough news uh, yeah. to to do that, yeah, to uh, and I and I I have a belief that the world's in very good hands, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I'm not overly scared about that. I you know of course I'm scared for my children, uh, and the things that they'll that they'll face. Uh, so trying to prepare them for that, um, and I you know I fear uh, I fear wasting time. <laughs> that I, that I'm not living up to what I should yeah. be doing. Right. Um, yeah. Because I, I can spend a whole day on Twitter sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, what would, what did I just do? What Wait, did what, I just what do? does this happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. I love, I love how uh, it's interesting when people talk about their greatest fears. A lot of people have mentioned time, you know, about yeah. like, Hey, are, am I doing enough with my time that I've been ha given? Especially when you realize like, um, you're on like i don't know like your your days are numbered right right i mean and i know it's kind of sounds like a morbid thing but but in the truth is is like mortality was meant to be temporal so what are we doing with the the time that has been given to us kind of like what gandalf would say right exactly um, right saint saint jerome kept a human skull on his desk mm -hmm. um to remind him uh that when you're tired and you think oh i'll have more time i'll have more time in the future you know future yeah. me always has more time Future sure. me is going to be healthy. Future me is going to be yeah. a better dad. Future me is going to be a better husband. Future me is, uh, but future me is a myth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, future you will have less time. <laughs> future yes. you will have, you know, it's whoever you are today is going to be who you are tomorrow. Yeah. So I, I try to get away from, oh, future me is 
going to make all these promises. Yeah. Right. And so I, it just makes me feel better for not keeping those promises today. <laughs> yeah. <And> so I, <laughs> I've yeah. got to get away from banking on future me doing all these things and just make yeah. it me today. Let's do these things right now. You know, God resides in the eternal now, right? Where yeah. past, present, and future are all now to him. Exactly. So the only way to connect with God is to connect with him right now. In the present, right in now. The present moment, you know? Yeah, don't put, don't put anything off that you're like, oh, one day that'll be good for me to do. Then yeah. if it's good for you to do tomorrow, it, it's just as good today. If not absolutely. To do it today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, last question. Okay. What advice would you give your younger self? Oh, man, uh, probably the advice, the same advice I give to youth, which is uh, you're more valuable than you think you are. Mm -hmm. um, you have, uh, there's a lot of bright spots ahead. Um, you know, I, I had a rough, I, I just, in my mind, it was a bit of a rough first 18 years, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, not a lot of confidence, um, not a lot of hope. Uh, and I think I would uh, instead of getting after myself, I, th there was a time in my life, I thought if I could meet my younger self, I'd probably punch him and say, you have a lot of unearned confidence. What is your problem? Right. Yeah. But now I'd probably, and now that I'm a little bit older, I'd probably have a little more compassion and say, you know, all that, all that arrogance uh, is just a, it's just a mask to mm -hmm. hide behind. And so I'd probably put my arm around him and say, listen, you're a lot more valuable than you think. Um, and the future has, has a lot of great things ahead, right? Mm. There's a lot of great things ahead for you. And I try to tell every teenager I talk to, you're valuable yeah. and there's a lot of great things ahead for you. So, you know, mm. don't, don't, don't try not to despair. Just keep moving forward and you'll get to the, all of that. Yeah. Oh man. I love that. Hank, that that's amazing. That's, that's a beautiful way to end this podcast. I, Thanks. I really appreciate just your wisdom like seriously i feel like these last these podcasts are like thera therapy sessions for me it's like i don't need to go see a therapist i'll just go see hank you know yeah it's and the connection this conversation right? it's that connection, connection right it's a it human really connection is. so i really i really appreciate these things um but uh yeah and, and i know like it's it you know we've played like phone tag or like or, right. or you know whatever but i'm so glad that this happened today because I think now more than ever, people need to hear this message. So, oh, so thank let's you. Let's so do it much. again sometime. Back. Happy to happy yeah. to come back anytime. That would be awesome. And well, and I know you're doing a podcast as well. Um, can you tell us like a little bit about your your message? Oh sure, yeah. So yeah, the podcast that I talked about earlier that my yeah. friend Steve started just before he passed away. Uh, it's mm. John, by the way, and I, and we just go through the "Come Follow Me" lessons mm. um, uh, each week, and we bring on one of the churches' experts. So I've done this long enough where I'm I've got friends in high places, so I can. Awesome. I can bring on, you know, the church's expert in right now it's history. Mm -hmm. uh, and next year it'll be the Bible. I could bring on the church's experts in Bible, but uh, so it's been pretty, it's been really fun. I've been, I've learned more probably than anybody else. Uh, awesome. And John and I, uh, a lot of people know who John, by the way, is um, John and I just have a good chemistry. We enjoy each other's company and personalities. And mm -hmm. so it, it, yeah, it, it seems to work. I hope, uh, I hope everyone will give it a try, but don't give up on this podcast. Just add yeah. that one to your list. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's awesome. In, in fact, I'm actually, um, I don't know if you know who Corbin Allred is. He's a, an actor. Oh yeah. 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 I know Corbin. We spoke together once out in California. So, oh, that's awesome. So Corbin and I, funny story, we served our missions together. Oh, wow. um, so he's my, he was my zone leader and we're still really good, good friends to this day. In fact, the movie that I just produced, he was one of the leads in it with me. Oh. So, so we've just been, you know, we've, we've been friends for a long time and now we're doing a lot more things together. And one of the things that we're putting together is actually a series about um, using humor to depict God's love. Oh, and, wow. And we're, it's like it, the two of us are going to be just sharing our experiences, life experiences, life stories that are just meant to be so funny because there are things that have actually happened to us. But in those ways, we show how God has like loved us through it all. And, and we're just stoked about it because we're like, dude, like we have to do this. Like there's no reason we're not doing this. So I, Hey, I love it. it. I want to be involved because yeah. I can tell I just, there's so yeah. many, you know, um, Elder Bednar calls them the tender mercies of the Lord, but I've had some bitter ironies of the Lord where I've yeah. learned some really hard lessons that I think I, it was humorous for everyone watching from above, yes. right? Like, yes. <laughs> like, 
this is going to be good for you. It's a little bit yeah. painful for me at the time, but oh, they man. ended up I, being I, kind I, of funny. Most of, most of mine involved like embarrassing moments of the Lord. Is oh, yes. Through, and I'm like, why would you do this? You know, <laughs> I, I can just tell like they're laughing and I'm like, all right, I get it. I get it. It's yeah. good. And you know what? I'm going to do this to my heavenly children when I get the chance. So. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, there's there's it's got to be it, yeah. it, being uh, being our heavenly parents has got to be humorous. Humorous for times. sure. It's just got to be like, <laughs> look at that. Like what is happening. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thanks again, Hank. I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll chat soon. Okay. Okay. I'd love it. Okay. Thanks again. Thanks so much for listening to the Lemonade Stand podcast. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you use to be alerted when we release new episodes. We'd also love to hear your feedback in the reviews. And if you or someone you know has an awesome Lemonade Stand story, please reach out to us on social media and let us know.